Do you like burst? What about some utility thrown in as well? Hey everybody, I'm Ronan. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another requested video, the Sorcerer Assassin. Thank you so much for this comment because this video was a lot of fun to make. And this is also what you guys voted for to see next, which is why we're here. Like and subscribe if you're new. I make content for Baldur's Gate 3 all the time and we'll be covering other games in the future like Dragon's Dogma 2. Don't worry for all the other requests, I will be getting to those as well, but for now, it is all about the Sorcerer Assassin. When you think of the Assassin specifically though, what do you think of? I personally at first thought the Assassin was a little weak. Getting the extra bonus action from Thief just seems really solid in pretty much all situations, right? Well, now that the game's been updated, you can no longer enter turn-based mode and start combat and have all your actions renewed. You used to be able to do that. You could enter turn-based mode, cast a spell, or do a weapon attack, and you would automatically get that action back at the start of combat when it's your turn. That is no longer the case, at least not for honor mode, which is why the assassin is very powerful. You can open up on an enemy, not only do great damage and things like that, or CC, but you get all your actions and bonus actions back right away, which is really powerful, especially considering the assassin will give you a 100% chance to crit against enemies that are surprised and haven't gone yet in combat, which means initiative is very useful for this build. But when you combine that with meta magic with the sorcerer, it is insane. With haste, quicken spell, and twin spell, the amount of burst you can do with this build as a caster is unreal. You can one tap bosses before they even get a chance to move. It's absolutely insane. So I certainly hope you guys enjoy because it was a lot of fun to make. Thank you Suicide Squash for being a member of my channel. If you would like to receive shoutouts like they do for all my future videos, hit join down below. You'll also receive some additional perks on my live streams. I usually live stream 11 a.m. EST on Fridays, but I do sometimes on Saturdays as well. Let's go ahead and break this video down. The Sorcerer Assassin is exactly what it sounds like. It is a multi-class of 8 levels Sorcerer and 4 levels Assassin. This way you can have 3 feats. You do not need the hag here for this build, however if you do utilize it, you can make the build more powerful. My starting stats are on screen, 8 strength, 14 dexterity, 16 constitution, intelligence 8, wisdom 10, and charisma 17. I would recommend for skill proficiencies to choose at least one charisma based proficiency whether it's intimidation, persuasion, or deception. That way you can go ahead and interact with NPCs outside of combat and use this character as the face of your party. The concept of this build is to mix meta magic from a sorcerer in combination with the assassin bonuses to guarantee critical strikes against your opening phase for some big time burst whether it's on single target or hitting multiple targets at once. How you choose to level your character is up to you. However, I would recommend starting out as a sorcerer, that way you do have proficiency in constitution saving throws. You have a choice of going draconic bloodline or storm sorcery. Both have their own benefits, however I do find draconic bloodline to be a little better overall when it comes to maximum damage. You can use any element that you would like, however I would recommend going fire as scorching ray in combination with gear we talk about later on is going to hit really hard. Not to mention you get a free burning hand spell as well. This build will utilize three different feats. First feat will be actor to get your charisma to 18. That way you can have another modifier as well as additional benefits for deception and will also give you performance. It doesn't state it gives you performance but it will actually give you performance if you don't have it. Your second feat will be ability improvement to get your charisma to 20. In combination with gear we talk about later on, it will be 22 charisma, which is fantastic because this will actually increase your damage of your chosen element by plus 6. And combination of certain gear, you can make your charisma based spells hit really, really hard. And the final feat is going to be Magic Initiate Warlock. The reason for this is that way we can have Eldritch Blast, an additional cantrip we can use if the enemy is going to be resistant to our chosen element. However, we also get it because we want this spell X. This is a fantastic spell that you can twin spell to put on enemies to debuff them and really make your openings even stronger for the extra necrotic damage that it applies. 
Now for your spells, there are very limited spells here since you only have eight levels in Sorcerer. So your spell slots only go up to level four, but that's okay because that's where the cantrip damage really comes in handy for Firebolt to really have some extra damage without a spell slot. Your Mad Magics, Mad Magic Quicken Spell, Twin Spell, and Extended Spell, fantastic to really get some extra burst. These spells I like using that I think are useful. You get Burning Hands for free with this build. Thunder Wave is nice if you need to knock enemies back. Of course, Shield is really nice just to have extra AC and protect yourself from magic missiles. Really nice defensively. Of course, magic missiles is my go-to spell if they are resistant to the spell I am trying to cast. Scorching Ray is a must-have for the fire build. Very, very powerful, and you can stack up so many debuffs and damage with this. I went with Misty Steps just so I can move around the battlefield a little easier. Counter Spell is very useful, especially for Honor Mode. Fireball is nice for AoE, but if you want to single someone out that's a go-to kill target, you would use Scorching Ray over Fireball. The benefit of Fireball is the entire AoE benefits from the heat mechanic, while Scorching Ray would only benefit from the first hit. Of course, Haste is really nice. You can cast this on yourself and an ally if you use Twin Spell, which is really powerful. Or if you prefer to have your concentration on more damage, Wall of Fire is also another fantastic spell to use. Your cantrips up here, of course, Firebolt, because we do want as much fire damage as possible. But I did like having Ray of Frost or Acid Splash, since both of these are also affected by your chest piece and necklace. And then for any type of construct, Shock and Grass is really useful, or it's just for enemies in melee range. This is a nice way to do some additional damage, and this is also affected by your chest and neck piece as well. So at bare minimum, your cantrips here that aren't fire will still do plus 12 additional damage because of the gear, which is a really fantastic way to get around using spell slots if you don't have to. Alright guys, for gear, majority of the gear that you're going to use is actually from Acts 2 and 3, and that's when the build really comes together. So starting out, let's take a look at some of our passives and other things like that. So we definitely want as much AC as possible. So if you prefer to drop Dexterity and instead use the Gloves of Dexterity to increase your AC even higher, you certainly can. You will get up to 20 AC by doing this. Really, really powerful stuff. Up to you whether you actually want to do that or not though. Other gloves that are very useful for this build gloves of belligerent skies to debuff the enemy you will almost always be doing radiant damage depending on the type of rings you use the daredevil gloves are also very powerful to use range spells as melee spells instead the boots boots of stormy clamor is my go-to you will be doing a lot of debuffing with this build this just adds to it my go-to boots use whatever else you want besides these your cloak once you get to act three is going to be cloak of the weave because you do want as much spell save dc and spell attack rolls as you can have however some great alternatives for example would be cloak of the displacement or of course naturally everyone's favorite cloak of protection now for your chest piece the potent robe in my opinion is the best for this build however if you prefer to use something else because you do have to be the good route and save the tieflings alternatives would be the robe of the weave you also get the Robe of Exquisite Focus that you can get inside Act 2. Or if you just want some extra temporary HP, you could use Ice Bite Robe. But the main two is Potent Robe and Robe of the Weave. Now your Helm, I went with Birthright. Getting plus 2 Charisma makes you go to 22 Charisma, giving you a plus 6 modifier. So depending on the type of element that you choose for Draconic Ancestry, this will make that element do plus 6 additional damage, which is very powerful. And as a fire ancestry, you, every single hit from Scorching Gray will add another plus six damage with this hat, which is really, really powerful. Alternatives for the helm, if you didn't want to use this helm inside Act 2, you can get the Fist Breaker Helm, which is really nice because this gives plus one bonus to initiative rolls and plus one bonus to spell save DC. And you definitely want to go as, as first in combat as possible with this build, so the extra initiative is pretty useful. I am a half elf here because I did want shield proficiency. Sentinel shield gives you plus three bonus to your initiative, which is why you use it. Combo that with the Hellrider longbow as another plus three initiative, giving you plus six initiative base, 
combination with your dex modifier, you're looking at a bunch of initiative for free. If you take a look here, I have plus 10 initiative with this build, and this is without alert. If you choose alert for your third feat, you have even more. Now, when it comes to your weapon, you are going to be using the legendary staff as soon as you can in Act 3. Before that, feel free to use the spell sparkler, but for now, you want this as soon as you can. This will give you a fantastic ability to use an element for. For fire spells, you want Flames of Wrath. This is really great because this will give you fire resistance and all your fire spells do additional damage equal to your proficiency bonus. At level 12, that will be plus four. Add that modifier with your charisma modifier for fire spells. You're looking at plus 10 damage on fire spells. So for attacks that hit multiple times like Scorching Ray, that's a lot of additional damage. Here's where it gets even better though. So for you to customize it even further. So what's also really great is the fact that you also get built in heat mechanic with this. So after you're casting a spell, you can use the heat mechanic to then do additional damage. Now, if you want to customize it, this is where your necklace and rings come in handy. So if you want your cantrips to hit really hard, like you saw in my opener, where I got that 70 plus crit with Firebolt, you would want to use the Necklace of Elemental Augmentation, cantrips dealing Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, Thunder, add spellcasting modifiers to the damage dealt. This stacks with the Potent Robe. So already, if you take a look at this, that's plus 12. Add my Charisma bonus. That's six right there, which is why it's plus 12. But as a Fire Draconic Sorcerer, I get another plus six on top of that, and then another plus four for using the Legendary Staff. So that's a lot of extra damage for a cantrip. If you prefer to use Magic Missiles, though, if you know you're going to a fight where they are resistant to fire damage or resistant to whatever element you are using, that's when the Spark Necklace comes in handy because Magic Missiles is a really nice spell and it just makes it even stronger. The two rings I would recommend is the Corsication Ring. Whenever you attack an illuminated target, you do Radiating Orbs upon the enemy, which is a fantastic debuff to just uh, decrease their chance to hit. Really fantastic. Combo that with the Kalos Glow Ring, and you're looking at a lot of additional points of Radiant Damage, debuffing, and then if you combo that with the Gloves of Belligerent Skies, because you do Radiant Damage with the Ring, you also apply the debuff from your Gloves as well. No matter what, you'll get the debuff from the boots, but this is just another way to stack it up even faster. When it comes to this build for the combat showcase, I did go with the fire route. Not everyone may necessarily want to do that, but I went with fire, so I am using the spark here for extra magic missiles if I do need to use magic missiles, which is very effective for this build, and I'll showcase why in a little bit. But feel free to equip whatever necklace you want. Necklace of Elemental Augmentation is very solid for this build as well. It will make your Firebolt hit really hard. Or if you are going for some of the other type of elements, it'll make the other elements hit really hard as well, since it will stack with your chest piece. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start out here. One thing you definitely want to do is use your Haste Potion, Stealth, Hiding Failed. Let's try again. There we go. Enter turn-based mode. So what I can do now, because I am in turn-based mode, I'm going to go ahead and open up with Twin Spell. You could easily open up with Haste, but depending on the situation, you may not be able to do that. So we're going to go Meta Magic Twin Spell here. I definitely want to open up and definitely try to get rid of the Watcher as soon as possible since they are very powerful. So we'll hit him. We'll hit this target down here at the same time. Okay, you can see all these guys right here, they are surprised. The ones that are surprised means I will have a 100% chance to guarantee a crit on them when I attack. The ones that aren't, like the Steel Watcher here, will not have a guarantee critical, but I will have advantage since I'm moving first and they haven't moved yet. So what we want to do is definitely knock out the Steel Watcher. If I had any lightning spells, lightning would do extremely high damage, but I'm not playing that build right now. I'm going with fire. So what we can end up doing then, I want to get my Scorching Ray to crit this guy for a lot of damage. So we'll go with a level 4, and you will see the amount of damage I do to him will be quite high with this setup. I'll go ahead and I'll just get the first Ray to crit automatically, and then you can see the rest of the damage for the other ones that don't crit. And you can see he is going to die. He's dead. His turn. Bye bye. 
Now that was a lot of damage to go through. So you have the fire plus the necrotic, all that extra damage I did to him, plus the radiant from my ring and stuff like that. Very powerful. So he's gone. That also got me to seven stacks of heat right away. So now what I can do for my next turn is go ahead and use heat convergence. And I'm going to go ahead and use my fireball from my staff. I'm going to hit everyone down here for big damage. And you can see he was one shot. This guy wasn't one shot. He was pretty close. She's pretty close and she has full HP. So now what I can end up doing, I can end up using my quicken spell here. And we can definitely go ahead and upcast our magic missiles or scorching ray, depending on what you want to do and hit them for even more damage. So let's go ahead and do scorching ray here just to showcase some of the damage this can do as well. But we'll go ahead and hit target down here once I can get in line of sight. There we go. We hit him once. You twice. You twice. And you can see all that critical hit damage they were just completely wiped out because I am part assassin. They surprise them because they are surprised. Every hit I do is a critical. Now this next opening, I changed out my necklace for the actual magic missiles here for the necklace of elemental augmentation just to make my firebolt hit a little harder. That way I can save some spell slots. So I'm going to go ahead and open up similar to how I did before using twin spell go ahead and get our hex on our enemies here because this is such a great way to debuff the enemy we'll use it on you and you as well now i am going to open up using my scorching ray on this character like i did before just because i really want him to get out of the picture and it hits really hard as this build so we'll do that get our heat stacks so he's about to explode. So now I'm going to go ahead, instead of doing what I did before, you take a look at my sorcery points. I still have seven points. So now let's go ahead and use Twin Spell. I'm going to use Heat Convergence, and we will use Firebolt here. We'll hit Target 1, who's surprised. And we'll hit Target 2 up top here. And you can see both of those were crits, and they both died. I hit a 77 on that character and a 55 plus a 7 from the necrotic. I still have my bonus action I can do, which means I can now use my quicken spell here. And I can choose to go ahead and hit both of these targets again. So if you want to save some spell slots, I could go with a cantrip again. Something like Eldritch Blast to hit these guys here. Or I, if I wanted to just simply finish them without any issues, I could also go with Scorching Gray and knock both of them out at the same time. Of course, I got to get in range, but. You guys can see how powerful that is, but what about other elements? What if you didn't want to be stuck in one element? I know some people like being versatile. Maybe they want to use lightning. Maybe they want to use frost, things like that. Well, you can certainly do that. I'm going to showcase that type of combat up next. And for those who wanted to see this build as a Storm Sorcerer instead of Draconic Ancestry, I am a Storm Sorcerer instead. All the feats and everything else is exactly the same. The only difference is now I get my Heart of the Storm Lightning for AOE Lightning damage whenever I cast a Lightning spell. I also gain the benefit of having Create Water Baseline, so I don't have to rely on any type of ally to debuff the enemy to make them vulnerable to cold or lightning damage. And I get bonus action fly whenever it's my turn after casting a leveled spell. So we are going to go ahead and open up with create or destroy water. We're going to use the create water option here. Actually, you know what? We'll save that. I'll just open up with twin spell here just to showcase that instead. So we will do twin spell hex. All right, now that it's my turn, you can see all these guys are surprised, which is exactly what you want. For whatever reason, if you get them wet first, sometimes they won't be surprised. 
I don't know if it's because they are aware that, hey, someone casted water on me or not. But definitely make sure when you open, you always open in stealth if you are able to, to get enemy surprised. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and use create or destroy water. I'm going to get everybody wet here. I'm going to use a level four spell slot so I can pretty much get everyone. I'm trying to do it where I don't move might not be possible. Go ahead and move forward slightly. Well, I'm going to get myself wet. You can see from them getting wet though, they also get reverberation. I'm going to go ahead and use call lightning here now and do some big time damage. We're going to go ahead and open up with these guys here just so you can showcase the amount of damage you can expect. And because they are surprised, this will be a 100% chance to crit. That was a lot of damage. So I just knocked out three people. I'm not sure how this person dodged it, to be quite honest, because they're in the wet field, but everyone else was knocked out. So for my bonus action, I could fly if I really wanted to to get away, or I could go ahead and use a spell. I'm going to go ahead and use Arcane Battery. I'm going to use my Quicken spell here, and we are going to use a level 4 spell, and we're going to use Call Lightning and hit the target right in front of me. So unfortunately, he did have Call Lightning saved, so he did take substantially less damage because of that, which is why it may be more important to actually use the Robe of the Weave for the extra spell save DC and AC in combination of some other spell save DC things, like the Ketherick Shield, for example, for even more spell save DC bonuses. But that's basically how this build works, very similar to the other one. Now I'm going to go ahead and use shield so I'm protected. Now I'm really glad these guys are wet still and he's right next to me because I'm going to go ahead and showcase why it's important to have the bonus action to fly. So we could do call lightning again, hit both of these targets in front of me. Did some really good damage but now i can fly with tempest magic without any opportunity attacks for free as you can see flying without receiving opportunity attacks which is what i'm doing so i can get away for free which is really nice and then i can follow up with another spell and wipe these guys out if i really wanted to the damage isn't quite as strong as the other build but you have a lot more utility and that's basically how you play this build, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe down below. Comment what you want to see next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. And for those who ask, my favorite version of this is to go the Fire Draconic Ancestry because Scorching Ray, every single hit critting in combination with the extra damage it does, is just really huge. Secondary would be Frost. And then third, Lightning for myself personally. All right, Ronin out.